upon you all. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is how we fight the devil back with scriptures. So what I'm going to be showing and proving is to all unbelievers and to all believers to make your faith increase. Most people don't know that Jesus Christ is God. With these scriptures, we're going to further prove Jesus Christ is God, because even in the Old Testament, they prophesied of him coming, how he would die on the cross, how he would pierce, how they would not break any of his bones. All of this stuff was prophesied and he wasn't even born yet. So when we read these things, it'll help you increase your faith in the word of God and Jesus Christ. So let's start right off and go straight to work. Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. See, if you just start off reading Old Testament, you don't know they talking about Jesus because you didn't hear about how he died and what they did. So, but when you read Hebrews 9 and 28, this makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation so these two scriptures are the same thing you read just now in hebrews 9 and 28 what was mentioned in isaiah 53 and 4 I want to move on to second second Corinthians chapter five verse twenty one for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him second Corinthians chapter five verse twenty one now we're gonna go into first Peter. Chapter 2, verse 24. It says, Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. See? It mentioned all that in um, Isaiah too, didn't it? Let's go back into the Old Testament to show you how the prophets of old time, from the beginning of creation, the world's first prophets that we read about in the word of God, when we read Deuteronomy, we go into chapter 21 and start at verse well, it's just one verse, Deuteronomy 21 and verse 23. It says, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day, for he that is hanged is a curse of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So it lets us know that 
he gonna be hung on the tree. But they not gonna bury him that day. So this is interesting. Deuteronomy 21 and 23. They not talking about none of the prophets from them Old Testament. Now, when you read that, you go into Galatians. Because it says, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And you remember when Judas betrayed Jesus and the 30 pieces of silver that he 300 or 30 pieces of silver that he got he hung he hung himself Judas, Judas hung himself so after he did that the people wouldn't take the silver they said this got innocent blood this silver was gained through innocent blood so they wouldn't take the silver and they buried it in somewhere that's called Potter's house or Potter's field 704 in Galatians Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 it says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree See, we just read that. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, stay in Galatians. Go back to chapter 3, verse 10. It says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. This is why Jesus had to tell him, Son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. He knew all that stuff was a curse, so he had to come and give us two great commandments. So we go into John now. Chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's John chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. Now let's go, let's go back into Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. I mean, yeah, Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 through 13. So Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 through 13. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So we read Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 through 13. Now, Go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. It says, And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. 
Okay, that was Exodus 12 and 22. Go to Exodus 12 and 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. So that was Exodus 12 and 23. Now watch 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. First Corinthians chapter five and verse seven. Purge out therefore the old leaving, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Today. Now I'm just gonna go keep going along. First Peter one and nineteen. First Peter 1 and 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So that was 2 Peter. No, 1 Peter 1 and 19. 1 Peter 1 and 19. Now, go into Psalms. 34 20. Psalms 34 20. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. So it's letting us know he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken so this was prophesied by king david in the book of psalms right before that it says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him out of them all he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate so this one scripture we paying attention to is he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken so this all happened to him on the cross these things that we are talking about and that was psalms 34 and 20. now we're going to go into john and prove this will happen john chapter 19 Verse 33 through 36. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true that she might believe. So that's John and it's telling us exactly what they said in Psalms would happen. Psalms 34, 20. And that was John 19, 33 through 36. Now watch this. Go into Exodus 12, 12 and 46. Exodus 12 and 46. They say... And one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. 12 and 46, y'all. Exodus. Go into Isaiah. Fifty-three and seven. 
he was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. And Isaiah, you hear all that? He didn't say a word, right? When they was asking him, are you the king of the Jews? He said, thou sayest it. But when they asked him all the questions, when they started accusing him, he didn't say nothing. They said, tell us, you know, I got the um, power to let you go or, or, or stone you. Remember, we read it last night, I think. Matthew 27. Let's read that one again. Isaiah 53 and the 7. Isaiah 53 and 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shares is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. So Jesus prophesied all these things. He knew he was going to be betrayed by Jesus. He knew he was going to be betrayed by the, uh, and taken by the chief priests and hung on the cross. So when it was time, he didn't speak at all, really, at all. They gave him, they tried to give him vinegar. He ain't drink. The only thing he did, cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. But he did a lot of other things, but that was one of the things that I, I was told by God to speak. Matthew 27 and 12. Matthew 27 and 12 says, And when he was accursed of the chief priests, excuse me, and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. You see, he answered nothing. Beautiful. Matthew 27 and 12. That's saying the same thing as Isaiah 53 and 7. Read them together. Write them down on a piece of paper. Or put it on two different tabs on your computer screen if you could. Look at them together. 1 Peter 2 and 23. First Peter 2 and 23, it says, who, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. See, first Peter 2 and 23. And now we're going to go into Matthew 27 and 35 he didn't say a word he committed himself to them to to him who judged righteously matthew 27 and 35 and they crucified him and parted his garments casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So that was Matthew, and let you know, after they crucified him, they took his clothes, his garments, and cast lots. So we read about this in Matthew, right, brothers and sisters? 2735. This now... We go into John. We're going to stay in the New Testament. And then we jump right back. Now go into John. 19 verse 23 through 24. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. See, told y'all. Now that was in John 19. Now let's go into Psalms 22 and 18. Psalms 22 and 18. 
They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Now this is King David who called Jesus Lord. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. That was Psalm 22 and 18. Go back to Matthew 27 and 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. See? Go to John 19 and 23 to 24 again. It says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, Therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. So we went through Matthew, John, Psalm. Let's go back into Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 21 and 23. Chapter 21, verse 23. It say, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day for he that is hanged is accursed of god that thy land be not defiled which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance so we got matt i mean deuteronomy 21 and 23 is letting us know his body shall not remain all night upon the tree but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day for he that is hanged is a curse of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So, tells us his body will not remain all night on the tree. Deuteronomy 21, 23. We actually read that, but I'm going to go... Let me see Psalms 22 and 16 for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierce my hands in my feet so when we read in Psalms 22 and 16 King David again letting us know for dogs have come have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierce my hands and my feet now we're gonna go into Matthew Twenty-seven and verse twenty-six, chapter twenty-seven, verse twenty-six, in Matthew. Twenty-seven and twenty-six. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Matthew 27 and 26. Now, Isaiah 53 and 6. Isaiah 53 and 6. Let's see what this say. All we like sheep 
have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Wow. So Isaiah prophesied that Jesus Christ will die on the cross and take the sins for everyone. He would die for everyone's sins. And they say this right here, Isaiah 53, 6. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's what he did on the cross. So 53 and 6, Isaiah. I want to go into Zechariah now. Zechariah 12 and 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. What they call Jesus, the God of grace. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And Jesus was always called the son of God, the only begotten son of God. So another prophecy from Zechariah. Now we going back into John chapter 19, verse 37. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. John 19, 37. Now we jump into Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Revelation 1 and 7, jump back into Matthew 27 and 46. It says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So he cried with a loud voice, spoke Hebrew, Matthew 2746. I'm going back into Psalms. 22 and 1. Psalms 22 and 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. So, Jesus quoted Psalms when he said that. Let's go back and get that. Matthew 27 and 46. Matthew 27 and 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27 and 46. Now go to Psalms 22 and 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Go to Psalms 31 and 5. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Who Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. 
called him a God of grace. We read about all this stuff right here. Okay, so Psalms 31 and 5. Let's go into Luke 23 and 46. And when Jesus cried, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. What? That was Luke 23 and 46, brothers and sisters. That was Luke 23 and 46. Luke 23 and 46. Luke 23 and 46. Let's go into Psalms again. 31 and 5. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. So that's Psalm 31 and 5. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Psalms 31 and 5. Luke 23 and 46 and when jesus had cried with a loud voice he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost luke 23 and 46 y'all now let's go into john 10 and 18 john 10 and 18 no man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. John 10 and 18. Let's go to John 19 and 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled saith i thirst john 19 and 28 let's go to psalms again psalms 22 and 15 psalms 22 and 15 says my strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death psalms 22 and 15 mark 15 and 23 mark 15 and 23 And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. So that was Mark 15 and 23. Go to Mark 15 and 36. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on the reed and gave him the drink saying, let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. So that was Mark 15 and 36. Let's go into John 19 Excuse me. John 18 and 11. John 18 and 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? John 18 and 11, y'all. Now I want to go into Psalm 69 and 21. They gave me also gall for my meat, 
And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. So Psalms 69 and 21 is what we just read in John 18, 11. Let's go back into the prophet Isaiah. 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And when and we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Let's get that back. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Isaiah 53 and 3. And then we go to Luke 13 and 34. Luke 13 and 34 says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. So that was Luke 13 and 34. I want Isaiah 53 and 12. Isaiah 53 and 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. All right, that's Isaiah. 53 and 12 and we'll go into Mark fifteen and twenty seven and with him they crucified two thieves the one on his right hand and the other on his left this is Mark 15 and 27. So these scriptures was researched. I looked them up. I didn't meditate on them. So that's why as I was reading them, I'm just reading them and putting them out as I wrote them down. It wasn't like it came from the heart. So I got to admit to y'all, this was researched and looked up online. But hopefully that was edifying for y'all. We got some more scriptures in the chat. I'm about to read them out. And once again, I, I didn't prepare for this video too long. So the longer I, I study and prepare, the better it'll be. motor oil amen just seen illusion may peace be upon you thanks i'm on the page too right now praise the lord jesus all oh, glory be to god randy All right, Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40. What does the end mean when it says, hang all the law and the prophets? Let's go there. So we have Matthew 23, I mean 22, verse 36 to 40. It 
says, Master, this is which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it lets you know. If something hangs on something, what do you do with a coat hanger? If I take my coat, y'all, and it has a a, 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 a little um, thing on the inside where I can hang it up on a hanger, that means the hanger is holding up my whole coat. Now, if this coat was the law of Moses and the hanger was the New Testament of Jesus, on that hanger hangs all the law. That hanger is only two screws in it. But this coat got thousands of buttons and, and, and zippers and all that stuff. But that, that hanger is the New Testament. So when it says that, brother, that's a good good um, scripture. Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40. It says, On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets the same way on them two screws that that hanger hang my whole jacket see it says jesus said unto him no let's get it back from matthew 22 and start at verse 35 then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So if you love God, you're going to love all the commandments anyway because you know it's in his word. It didn't say keep all the commandments. It says love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. But and then you got another scripture where he say I write again I write unto you a new commandment. I want to, if you can give me that part, give me that part too. I was told they used to break legs during crucifixion because they'll die faster. They can't use them to hold themselves up. I don't know about that. Probably so. But a lot of stuff that happened, what they did, you would read it in the scripture. So you can't always listen to what you're told because sometimes people would tell you stuff. But they won't show you in the scriptures where they learned it or where they seen it. So you got to be careful. That's how people can do deception on you. Make you believe stuff that happened in the Bible. But it won't say it. Like. A lot of y'all played that board game. When when um when y'all was younger or it was like a young game that you used to play called Simon Says. But Simon was a sorcerer. Simon was the one who tried to buy by the Holy Ghost. And they said, your money perish with thee. Peter, Peter, the one who Jesus told, thou art Peter upon this rock. I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the whole church was built on Peter. And Peter told Simon, your money perish with thee. Your heart is not right with God in this matter. He tried to buy the Holy Ghost. So... Simon was a wicked man from the Bible, but when we all grew up, we used to play this game called Simon Says and, and make you do anything that they say. Simon says, touch your ears, touch your nose, and Simon could say anything. That's sorcery, brothers and sisters. That was witchcraft. We didn't even know it. Brother, I don't, 
believe in that ancestor stuff, brother. He said, your ancestors are, are from Africa or Sri Lanka. A white man can't be your God, bro. See, you don't know what you're talking about. He's saying you are from the tribe. Listen, um, African man. I'm not from no tribe. I'm from... I'm from the tribe of Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. You get what I'm saying? This dude is saying, go search for your organs and origins and stuff like that. But his name is Jesus Christ, brother. I don't talk Hebrew. So you're saying his name is Yahshua. Everywhere in the Bible, it say, call his name Jesus. It don't say no Yahshua. It say Jesus. Yeah, it don't say Yahshua. Y'all see the birds? Them are um geese. Did it say in the Old Testament the Hebrews could eat those birds? Because I know certain birds they was allowed to eat. You know they could eat beetles and, and grasshoppers, right? When I learned that, I said, oh, I'm going to hit them hard. They want to keep playing. I'm coming back strong with these teachings. The more and more I read the law, the more edified I get. And the more I want to come back and do more teachings. Just as Israel was saved by the... Yo, this is crazy, brothers and sisters. I hit the Hebrew Israelites with that. Y'all, y'all, you, you know it's in the law to eat beetles and stuff like that, right? Y'all better stop playing with me. I pull out all the scriptures. They don't want somebody like me reading the Bible because I'm going to show you everything that's in there. They only teaching stuff that they was taught to keep teaching and going over. They don't read every scripture like how we, what we do over here. This is a true and living church right here. This is the church of God. The only church name you see in the Bible. The only name a church is supposed to be. Ain't none of these church names biblical. Tell them where they see it, your church name in the Bible. Or going to church only on Sunday. And we ain't even going to talk about the tithes and offerings. We worship God every day. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. That's the word. Just as Israel was saved by the blood over the door over their doorposts in Goshen and Egypt, man was saved by the shedding of Jesus' blood. He is the Passover lamb. Yes, that's right. Taurus, Taurus VS Peck. She, look, this dude wake up, says his name is Yahshua. You don't never see nobody telling us to call him his Hebrew name. It say call his name Jesus. It said his name is Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. So what's the name for God with us or God in Hebrew? You keep saying Yahshua. His name ain't even Yahshua. His name is God, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the eternal father, the prince of peace, Lord and savior. He got so many different names. You can't just say his name is Yahshua and think we're going to stay stuck on that arguing, fighting back and forth with that. That's an old, played out, hand-me-down, Black Panther, I'm black and I'm proud teaching, brother. You got to get, come to the truth, brother. Jesus Christ loves you. He don't want you to perish and be stuck in a small mind way of thinking. That's a small way of thinking. The devil is a liar at wake up. You see what Randy said to you? His name ain't Yahshua in English. We study English, brother. We not trying to preach Hebrew and talk Hebrew. Yo, you know how long it'll take us to learn before we can't even hail nobody. Pray, but we can't use God to work. We can't use God to speak, to help people heal when we speak his word. If we keep worrying about what his name is. 
Leviticus 12, 3 is the real. See, you didn't spell it the same way as a profanity cuss word would be. But brother, the, one of the rules I'm mostly really, um, I'm really strict on this rule is keep the profanity out. Because I just removed the, the, the message when people use profanity. But being that you didn't spell it the way that is, but we, 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 you can, you can speak without saying those type of words, brother, because this is a holy, righteous channel. Leviticus 12 and 3, we'll go there right now. Leviticus 12 and 3 says, and in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised so it's telling us in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised so what is that that's talking about The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the first of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Wasn't none of y'all circumcised on the eighth day? But y'all running around talking about your Hebrew Israelites and we showing that you ain't even circumcised in your heart. So you're not circumcised physically and you're not circumcised in your heart. But you running around teaching everybody that we Hebrew Israelites and the lost tribes of Israel. Don't make no sense. Just as the lamb was eaten in haste and none of the bones were broken. So it is Jesus bones were not broken. He is the Passover lamb. Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 to 29. All right, hold on. Shabbat, shalom, everyone, and God bless you all. John Yo, may peace be upon you, brother. We got... 22 verse 28 through 29 Deuteronomy If a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. So, that's in Deuteronomy 28 through 29. And that's chapter 22 in Deuteronomy. Jesus was crucified during Passover, the preparation day to be exact. So if the lambs that were used were year old lambs, then it means Christ was born during the Passover time. It don't tell us that, but. You will have to give us the scriptures and we can read it, but I see what you're trying to say. Jesus was saying that the most important command is to love. So when he told us these are the two great commandments, love your neighbor and love the Lord thy God. If you love God, you're going to have love 
even towards the sinners because God didn't destroy Pharaoh. God didn't destroy all them witches and them wizards, people that was doing sorcery. He let people warn them and give them warnings of his word. And then they, they played their role and they exalted Jesus Christ when they all came together and conspired to crucify him and, and kill him. And they kept doing all this stuff. They exalted and proved that he was God when he was telling people, don't preach in his name and stuff like that. Kick you out the synagogue if you say his name, if you say he's the Christ. So he knew that their hearts was uncircumcised. So mostly a lot of teachings was dealing with the heart to turn the heart from being so hardened and having all these unclean spirits controlling the heart, making these young children want to watch all this ungodly stuff on their cameras, all on the internet. The internet has became the devil's biggest tool to deceive a lot of young children they start when they give them all these cartoons and stuff man ain't none of that stuff biblical they don't got too many cartoons that was worldwide that talked about god or jesus do it that talked about the scriptures if they could make rug rats and all that worldly stuff they shows you that the world is enemies of god and whoever is friends with this world is enemies of god it just proves that the scriptures is true we don't have no holiday celebrating Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't celebrate Easter in the Bible either. So a lot of this stuff that we see is 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 mockery of God. So them two scriptures that we see, Jesus was saying the most important command is to love the two great commandments. Exactly what Matthew was saying means Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. Rodney Mickney says God is evil. I don't know why would you say God is evil. God is love. God is the reason why we all have breath in our body. God is the reason why the seasons change. Ain't no man changing from the winter to the summer to the spring and making it snow and all this stuff. God is doing that. If man controlled the weather, is he might try to manipulate the weather. He can't control the weather. If man controlled the weather, you think he would want all the mudslides in California? You think he would have wanted it to snow in Texas and people died and stuff like that during that snowstorm in Texas because they never seen weather like that? Man ain't controlling all this weather. Now, he might do some wicked things now, but he ain't controlling everything like how we think, how most people assume. John 13, 34, I write unto you a new commandment. John 13 and 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. So he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. So he letting us know right here, 
this new commandment is that we have love one to another. Let me go get something to drink, y'all. Because matter of fact, I'm gonna stay here for a second. My gas light came on too. That's why I was like, I was about to go get gas, but I'll stay here. So it means all the law is a part of the two commandments and they are in effect, right? We must still follow the law of Moses except the sacrificial law, right? No, that don't mean that. That means the law is done away with and we saved by grace, brother. That means all the law hang on the two prophets that Jesus gave us. Like I told you about this coat. With this hanger on this coat, you see it? If I hang it up on a coat and on a hanger, this is all the law on this coat. And then if I hang it up on a hanger, the new two commandments is that hanger. And all the law hangs on these new two commandments. So that's how you look at it. We wouldn't have no law if it wasn't for Jesus. He was the reason for the law. Once you start learning these things, you start having different ways to teach and different ways to talk. And he put a different spirit in you, not like the world give you. So you can really interpret his word and speak his word, how it need to be spoken. Can eat grasshoppers. Yeah, this is why he had to come in and, and give us these two great commandments and say, we not under the law. We saved by grace. The law is done away with. See, he said the old house is vanished. Now a new covenant is made. So this this man is uh, he was he's worthy of more glory than Mer than Moses, it says. So when he came and told us these are the two great commandments, he was letting us know, man, ain't nobody eating no grasshoppers, marrying no maid servants. Matter of fact, the law is made for men stillers. He came and told us all these things. So it's just beautiful man so i'm glad you asked that question brother all glory be to god can eat grasshopper does not mean we have to why I don't if it's in the law unless necessary during famine no brother it said you can eat beetles you can eat certain type of birds you don't want me to go back into all the birds y'all can eat i think it said you can eat ostriches and stuff like that brother don't make me go into these scriptures my brother i'm telling you i love you brother i don't want you to be i don't want you to be deceived give me the scriptures y'all where it say what type of birds they can eat you don't even know what these birds mean brother i ain't never seen nobody do no teachings and say well, this is a is, is, is a is a falcon and this this is this. They ain't doing those teachings because they don't want to keep those laws. They only want to teach you what they want to keep. Trying to be lords over people. They want to be lords. They dress in them big jackets and stuff. Jesus told us to watch out. They wear um they they they, he said it, they love to enlarge the broaders on their phylacteries. They be popping their collars. Truth be told, 3737, you can't prove what, what you're saying with the Bible. That's how we know what you're saying is the spirit of error, not the spirit of God. You, But you have the spirit of error, but Jesus loves you, brother. I hope you can come closer to him. I hope his word will change you. And I hope he will help you open the eyes of the blind and become a leader in the spirit. And don't be a slave to sin. Because anyone who keeps continuing in sin and glorifying sin and finding pleasure in sin is a slave to sin. All unrighteousness is a sin. And he will clean you and wash you from all unrighteousness. That's what it says in his word. You said Jesus doesn't love trans. Jesus never came around condemning trannies. He taught against that stuff and said, people who do this stuff, 
God will judge them. So he told every man to have their own wife. He said, let the woman have their own husband. So he never taught for men to be trannies or nothing like that. But he never made laws to stone them and stuff like that. So he want every man to come to the truth. That's what it is. You shouldn't have to condemn somebody for them to see the truth every time. When I made that Meek Mill video, I didn't condemn him. He, he's just calling out for help. He's just saying he's a heathen. But Kanye mocked Jesus. He said Jesus' name and said it made it look like Jesus is the reason why he don't he don't have what he want through Jesus or he, he don't have the relationship that he wants with Jesus or something. He just talked like Jesus let him down. And how can you say that when you have all these things that to be grateful for? We don't bear each other burdens like Jesus told us. So he thinks about himself and then he's so prideful. He says, I'm God. That's what Lucifer said before he got cast out of heaven. He was, he was trying to be prideful. He wanted to be like God. Churches of Christ are in the Bible. Romans 16, verse 16. All right, let's go there real quick. Romans 16, verse 16. Romans 16, verse 16. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. The churches of Christ salute you. And who is Christ? God, right? Now, it's letting you know the churches of Christ but you never heard them say this any other time in the scriptures that's just one time that's just like T.D. Jakes they said Jesus is the potter and we're the clay so they call a church potter's house that's not biblical this said the churches of Christ salute you That means all of the churches that Christ started. It don't mean the name of the church is Church of Christ. That's what that's not what it means, brother. It means all the churches that Jesus Christ started. And he is God. And we've been proving that, so. How he loved you and died and devil don't exist. I don't know what that means, truth be told. But yes, he does love you. And he did die and rise again on the third day. Came back and did many more miracles. Sit on the right hand of God. Until the day comes. When he comes back, you saying the devil don't exist. That's like saying robberies don't happen. That's like saying people don't lust after women and commit adultery against their husband and wives. That's like saying people don't worship idols and false gods. 
the devil does exist and the devil is a liar. Jesus told them, ye are of your father the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When he speak, he speaketh a lie. He's a liar and the father of it. New business. We talking about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. His name is the most powerful name on earth is the only name under heaven which men must be saved it's the only name given on earth which men must be saved so we talking about the lord and savior of the world but the world hated him back then and the world still hate him now but he has a a lot of true strong followers that he called out of the world to be disciples become fishers of men to go to the nations and preach the gospels and tell people to turn from their wicked ways to repent from their sins the same way the devil tell y'all to do everything that's evil to cheat on your wives have second wives, have concubines, all of the ungodly things that Jesus never taught, like believe in these false gods, save you from the planet Ka, believe in the Anunnaki's, believe in um, my yacht, like your heart gotta be lighter than a feather. Nature Boy told the judge, my heart is lighter than a feather. He was talking that my yacht stuff. Them Hebrew Israelites, talking all that J stuff in the alphabet, all that stuff that they come with, read the book of Jasher and all that stuff the devil tell you, that's everything that God is not. So, Jesus loves, man. Jesus is love. He comes to change your heart. Once he changed your heart, you're going to start thinking different, speaking different. He's going to put his word in you. He's going to change your name. Write your name in the book of life. Pull you out there, pull you away from the pits of hell. He's going he gonna to stop that easy. He's going to. He gonna stop that easy pass expressway lane that you was taking on the road to hell. Slow you down. Amen. Put you in the right path. Make you walk upright. The word of God say a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. So that means if your steps are ordered by the Lord, you are everything you doing is according to his word. You don't want to do anything outside of his word. Only thing you want to do is glorify his name, glorify his word. And he going to order your steps. I'm about to go get gas, y'all, because I don't want to be here stuck. It look like this gas is going down pretty far. look like this gas going down pretty far check it out I know I got a problem with the oil dripping so I don't want to push it too too much Let me just go grab this gas real quick finish answering y'all questions and Done with this live in the fuel. I'm gonna come with some more topics. 
I may try to start just going more hours just recording all day 24 hours as soon as I get up I come out and do my hour stream day morning stream 7 hour 7 a.m. hour 2 3 4 5 hours however long we go and then throughout the day I'll just be trying to keep uploading and uploading I'm about to really try to give like as much time as I could to just putting out the gospel can't believe people still following this religion after all these years truth be told you still thinking that we preaching religion we preaching the word of god rightly divided religious people go to church on sunday religious people tell you you gotta dress a certain type of way they wear suits to church if the pastor come in there preaching with a regular outfit they gonna look at him funny that's religious people it's about the word of God over here I'm not judging nobody on however you want to come to God all I'm telling you is God is real so whether you an atheist whether you a believer, whether you a backslider, whether you serve a different God, which is, which is a false God, you still going to have to answer up to everything. So, you don't never go to no Hindu and tell them, man, your religion is this, this and that. You don't never tell no Muslim Man, this, your religion is this, this, and that. You ain't going to the devil telling the devil about how his religion is this and this and that. You know the devil got a religion, right? It's called unrighteousness. All unrighteousness is a sin. The, the sins of the world, that became a religion. That's a, that's a religion. That's the devil's religion, sin. But if you don't have knowledge of God, you won't know these things. So when you go watch things like movies, movies that have a lot of explicit things in the movies, and you like watching certain scenes with the women that get intimate or whatever, and it's, the women are showing too much of their bodies in these movies, that's your religion. See? So you you could be like pure religion undefiled before God is checking on the widows and the fatherless and keeping himself unspotted from the world. And it's a lot of other things where it talks about certain things where if you don't do certain things, your religion is in vain. So if you don't know what religion mean, you can't even say that because you're the same type of person that will probably say, yeah, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. That's, that's what you would say. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. But the first time people heard about spirituality was from the Bible. And the Bible does talk about the Jews' religion, and it talks about religion in the New Testament. So you can never say that you're God or you're spiritual 
without saying you learn about people's culture and customs and their religion. I'm not taking away from nothing from God's word. I'll be right back, y'all. Hold up. That's what they do when they say stuff like that. Try to take away from the word. They add to the word when they do that stuff and say, man, you still stuck on religion and this and that. Could they be the same people that read the Bible and they didn't like what it said because it's too much rules and instructions where they don't want to follow it. They want to be rebellious and do what they want to do and lean towards their own understanding. So they had taught these things, but that's taken from the word. taken from the word because you read the bible before in your life and you heard things that it say like thou shall not steal thou shall not commit adultery and you didn't like those things so you said i can't believe people still following this religion after all these years they still stuck on religion yeah because you don't like when the bible say thou shall not kill love your neighbor as you love yourselves blessed be the meat for they shall inherit the earth Blessed be the poor in spirit. You don't like these things. You don't want to be. It says, God exalt the humble, but he resists the proud. Whoever exalts himself will be debased, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. You don't like these sayings. These are hard sayings to you. So what you rather do is say, oh, man, I, I don't know why y'all people still follow this religious stuff. Yeah, because you want to stay in the world. You worldly. Hold on, y'all. And the way how I just told you, I'm not over here preaching religion. I'm not saying, well, we got a sermon that we got to start and end at this time. It's no schedule. This ain't religious. This is just worshiping God. Showing love to God. 
This ain't religious. But yeah, I, when you know, when you see people talk like that and say these things, that's what they admitting. And that's what they letting you know. That they are enemies of God. They probably want to have second wife and stuff like that. So they want to push people away from the truth because you don't got no religion that started before the word of God. So why would somebody listen to anything you're saying? God's word is the truth. We read about Solomon. We read about all these prophecies and all these things that came and happened. And you telling us to watch cartoons and watch television, watch love and hip hop, watch 50 Cent Power Show. Watch all these new movies coming out. What is better than the word of God? There's nothing better. I never seen people say, yeah, man, I was watching sports. And then, you know, I just prayed to my favorite basketball player and my stress was relieved and, and, and every. Man, people be getting anxiety going to these um, games sometimes. The Boston Red Sox don't like the New York Yankees and stuff. They got rivals. These, some of these fans be upset and getting angry at each other. That's a sin at the games. In the crowds, throwing stuff through the uh, to, at the visitors and stuff. So that's a spirit of pride too. When you don't want to show love to your your opponent that you're facing, because Jesus said love, even if you look at them like you gotta beat them, you can still you ain't gotta be fighting. The hockey, even the hockey players fight. Back in the days, y'all, when we used to play the video games, didn't they always make the hockey players fight on the video game? because they fight in real life so they always put them in time out on the nhl game when we used to play that i think it was on playstation you could fight on there that's what made a lot of people go buy that game because they said yo they you could fight on there and we know bible say be not brawlers but if somebody tell us don't listen to the bible then we left to go play black ops and stuff like that then your children, seven years old, in the house playing black ops, they might make a mistake and get the father's hunting rifle and then go outside and want to play black ops like them children that was 13 years old in Florida and, and saw black ops and they was 13 years old and decided to shoot out with the police. See, we trying to rebuke, I rebuke all that in Jesus Christ's holy name. It ain't gonna be no more children growing up being deceived by the devil. Not while I'm speaking the truth. Not while I'm here preaching the word of God. Jesus Christ was born that he will destroy the works of the devil. As long as he's still alive, his spirit is still alive. As long as we still got faith, we can still move mountains. So I wanted to spend a little extra amount of time discussing that question because always can't just salute your brethren only. They said every man that asks a question, be ready to give an answer. I'm ready to answer all questions. Yeah. All glory be to God. Go ahead, do what y'all did. Think of your your most toughest question, you could try to trick me up and tempt me like they did Jesus. Now this is a graven image, brothers and sisters. You wanna know what a graven image is? This is a graven image. Check him out. That man right there, 
whoever he is, he ain't no man because he dead. He in the dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But that's a graven image. Some war military dude. That's why I be telling y'all, sometimes the military take a lot of pride. Dude got a big old headstone, huh? But he did. He ain't alive. But I'm just telling y'all, that's a graven image. Now, if somebody wear that on their shirt, that's idolatry. Now, if you put that up on your shirt and say, this is God, that's a graven image. It say, don't make no likeness of anything in heaven and in the earth. If y'all think that that man that is on the picture is Jesus Christ, you might as well say that's Jesus Christ because ain't nobody tell that man to draw that picture. Don't nobody know how he looked. Only the people that was with him and they didn't write it in the scriptures. They ain't put no pictures in the scriptures. So shouldn't nobody be concerned about how he looked? He didn't even teach about that. He ain't even teach like, oh yeah, who is who um who who is my family that got the same bloodline as me? Them are the only ones that got the promise and stuff like that. He ain't teach nothing like that. That's the devil in you telling you to think like that. Remember to like and subscribe, but more importantly, love one another. Amen, Randy. All right, check this out, my brother. Let me answer your question. Because I don't want you to be deceived. You said that Jesus doesn't love gays, lesbians, and atheists and doesn't let enter his house. Then what kind of love is that? So your God partially loves his children. Listen, I didn't say Jesus doesn't love gays and lesbians and atheists. I told you that everybody who do unlawful and unrighteousness is a sin. And God will judge them, judge them on judgment day. But I said he loved everybody. How else would people be able to change if they don't feel God's love? But God's love ain't going to let you do what you want to do. So I never said Jesus doesn't love whoever, gays and lesbians. That he want them to change. That's how he going to get them to change. Showing them that a man or a woman is never supposed to be with the same sex. So he gonna show them through his word that he, he loved you so much, he gave his life up for you. So you can see, this is the teachings that he gave and this is what his apostles taught. And this is what he said himself about marriage and laws. So he never taught to be with the same sex or nothing like that. That don't mean he didn't love people that was doing the sins. He said, forgive them for they not know what they do is wrong. Father, forgive them. So when the woman was caught in adultery, he could have let them stone her. He could have said, yeah, I know it's adultery. But he said, he who was without sin cast the first stone. He showed them right there he was God too. You got to look at it like this. Every time Jesus was tempted, he showed them he was God every little thing he did every time they every scripture you read throughout the scripture you gotta start putting this in your mind because he's they keep saying he breaking the law but he's in there fulfilling the law and giving us new commandments and stuff like that so once you start knowing that he was prophesied in isaiah the old testament speaks about his death You'll start looking at the word of God completely different.
say he got the keys to heaven and hell. So, but he don't want anyone to perish. He want all to be saved and come to repentance. Glory to God. Praise Jesus for he is holy eternally. Amen, Randy. Sandy says, if you keep the new commandment in John 13, 34, you automatically keep the Ten Commandments because out of love, you wouldn't hurt or steal from or lie to or kill, etc. your neighbor. Yes, exactly. Because if you love the Lord thy God, we know God gave Moses all the Ten Commandments, so we read them and observe them, but we don't have to keep them. Like when they say them laws regarding eating certain dietary laws and stuff like that, we don't have to keep all that. The most important stuff that we know is because he said, love the Lord thy God with all your mind, your heart, and your soul, if we start putting our love or trust into graven images, thinking crystals on your wrist can protect you and stuff like that, that's idolatry, a form of witchcraft. That's not loving God. So that's in the Ten Commandments. So we don't have to keep them. The law is written in our heart. That's why he gave us our two great commandments like this, because he fulfilled the laws of Moses and we walking in the spirit fulfilling them too already fulfilled them we the tribal we worship our mountains that gives us food so we pray to our trees for giving us woods we pray to water as you know we don't hate anybody, gays, lesbians, atheists, none. So the tribal people, I guess out in Africa, they saying they worship the mountains. Um, God never wanted you to worship his creation, but he wanted you to worship him because he's the creator. So that's like me saying, okay, let me go down to that tree right there and go, go hug it and kiss it because it gives life and it makes me breathe. No, God gave that tree life. In the book of Genesis, you will follow along with me. And it'll say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let me go in the book of Genesis. You say, we the tribal, we worship our mountains that gives us food. We pray to our trees for giving us woods. We pray to water. As you know, we don't hate anybody, gays, lesbians, atheists, none. So you, he says, we pray to our trees, brothers and sisters. That's like praying to a Christmas tree, right, brothers and sisters? Like that tree right there. Look at that tree. Picture me praying to that tree, brothers and sisters. We know what we worship. But look, let me give you Genesis. Let me give you scriptures, my brother. Go into Genesis chapter one in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth and God and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So. Go to the third day, y'all. Genesis chapter one, verse nine. What happened on the third day? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place 
and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed in the field, in the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. In the evening and the morning were the third day. So we know that God made the trees. He made the earth. He made the seas. He made the seasons. So don't worship the creation. Worship the creator. Praise God, my brother. That's like saying you're going to pray to the moon because it gives you light at nighttime. Now, we know that's foolish. We know what we worship. Zechariah 14 and 6. King James Version. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Um, let me get that. Let me get that in the in the scriptures. Hold on, y'all. Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yeah, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seeth therein. And in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And Sivan takes us to the Hebrew month. Kids live. That is when Jesus Christ was conceived in Marian's womb, not born, meaning late in December of Marian conceived and kids left 25th. Then Jesus Christ would have been born on the first day of the Sukkoth or Sukkoth, the Feast of Tabernacles. So give or take around September, or October, then would be the correct time when he was born. I heard that before, brother. That's the time around I was born, too. 
Hector Penn says lies, but he don't post no scriptures. This brother just posted and Savan takes us to the Hebrew month, Kislev, December. That is when Jesus Christ was conceived in Miriam's womb, not born, meaning late in December. If Miriam conceived on Kislev 25th, then Jesus Christ would have been born on the first day of the Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. So give or take around September, October would be the correct time when he was born. Brother Taurus V.S. Peck says, Acts 15 puts to bed the law and the new covenant in Jesus. Please read carefully and you will see. Let's go to Acts 15, y'all. Acts 15. It says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much dispute, and Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, put purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence, and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take them, to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return. And I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. 
And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemeth good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have set therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, for fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered together the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. So that explains everything about the law. It puts to bed the law. And it tells us why. But it does say, do not eat things strangled with blood. So I used to have like a, a diet where I, I uh eating habit where I ate no chicken. Once I started reading the word of God, like nine months ago, I started back eating chicken. Because my diet was, I, I, I was only eating pizza at one time, pasta, pizza every day. So, praise God for the word of God. Remember, folks, as soon as one man or God says that all human beings should be under him or follow him that is a politician not you not a god so i don't know what that's supposed to mean but god said all men to be saved through jesus christ there's no other name given under heaven which men must be saved so what it's saying is those who believe will receive eternal life everlasting life but those who don't believe they will receive the wrath of God abideth on them. So it's not a politician. It's the creator giving his laws through his prophets. So if you don't believe that stealing is wrong, they got laws made for people like you. If you don't believe lying is wrong and adultery is wrong, then they got laws made for people like you. That's why the divorce rate is so high. 
because y'all don't believe in the truth. Remember, light shineth in the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because his deeds was evil. Their deeds were evil. So it's the same way today. Thank you, my brother, for proving that the word of God is true. All glory be to God. Topper says, Zechariah 14 and 16, King James Version, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations, I'm going to get it, hold on. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. When it's talking about that, talking about Jesus, Jesus, the great politician, he might be a politician in your life because your heart is hardened and you don't want to believe all of the scriptures that we show and prove that he's God. But you cannot preach and prove that he's not God using the scriptures. Or you cannot preach and prove that he was a politician. He said the servant is not greater than his master. He said, I washed your feet. So make sure you be humble like, like me. He took on the form of a servant. Leave atheists out of this. Hector Penn, if you think God ain't real, then what brought you in this chat? The same way how the devil is real and he's using you to be rebellious and fight against God's word. That's the same way how God is real. I got the light. You can't see because you're in darkness. You got eyes to see, but you still can't hear. And you, the saying of the prophet Esaias is true as it is written. They have eyes to see, but can't see ears to hear but can't hear and that's how it is because you read the word of god to people and they say no hebrew god and they say no hindu i mean buddha is god they don't want to believe that the lord spoke to moses and gave him the commandments then one greater than moses came and jesus christ died and rose and he resurrected people brought lazarus back from the dead and stuff like that so i don't when, when we started reading about how Jesus Christ brought Lazarus back from the dead, that really showed and proved that. Man, this man, he healed blind people, brought Lazarus back from the dead. He fulfilled the Sabbath. He did all these things. Of course, when we showing and proving this stuff, there's going to be people that's going to not want to see what they're reading and hear what they're hearing. But they read it and seen it with their own eyes. So they have no excuses when judgment day come, all glory be to God. They changed the Bible, bro, when Galileo said earth and reverend for the sun. You can't show that in the Bible. You ain't read that in the Bible. Some other man told you that with his heart that divides wicked imaginations. If you could show a scripture and prove that, then we could see that it's true. But Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say Wikipedia or Google is the way, the truth, and the life. I could write an article and put it up on Google and make up a, bunk, a bunch of lies about Jesus. That don't mean it's true. They ain't changed no Bible because the same Bible we got is the same Bible that we are going to all have. They ain't changing this, but they make an NIV and a new version, but ain't, the word ain't changed. They say the same thing in a different way. That's a whole different top, topic and teaching. But the word will never change. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But one jot or tittle, 
for my word, not what not. You know, it said heaven and earth before one jot or the law change. What is the correction? Correction in the so-called holy book. When people will come to know about more things, they will introduce New Testament Pro Max version. I guess. I recommend the movie God's Not Dead for those who believe God isn't real. You got to send that to my email, Just Lane Illusion. I'll be interested in looking at that just to come back and have some more topics to preach. He might inspire me to preach on a different a different way on for the unbelievers to convince the gainsayers. In thy glory says charity is thinking about others before yourself. Yeah. Say charity cover a multitude of sins. Don't it say that? And I want you to watch the movie, The Chariot of the Gods. Movies is good to watch, but the word of God is what they made these movies about. So if I got the word of God in my heart, I'm a walking Cinemax movie. Walking Cinemax. Big, big screen. We got the word of God in our heart, brother. Once you could go talk about all these 66 books for an hour and not even have to open the book, you are the movie that they, I am the movie Passion of the Christ. It's inside of us. All of us are. They writing about our Lord and Savior. And they don't mention nothing in the Old Testament. They come right in when John was baptizing people in that movie Passion of the Christ. It's not really a lot of stuff Old Testament like that. But they got a whole bunch of Jesus movies out. I haven't watched all of them, but some of them do got stuff in the Old Testament. Candace Foster. Good morning, man of God. Night Lovey. Hi. Chastity Goins. Amen, brother. That brother put his cash app up in his screen name. He ain't playing no games. <laughs> oh, man. Candy, by the way, it's Yeshua. And, it, and this shows just the closeness of Jesus' name and his followers' name, Jehovah, using the same consonants. Yeshua is just a, derivat a derivation of Yeshua, of Yah Yahashua. So, Yeshua is derived from Yahashua. Plain observer. You up in PA? Nah, I'm not up in PA, bro. Uh, uh. Uh, about an hour, maybe, from PA. Yeah, Jesus never forced anybody to believe in him, never hated Joker, never hurt any man or animal. He never told anybody to just follow him and believe in him. People were coming to him because they were finding out about the miracles and the wonders that he was doing, and they wanted to be made whole. So that's why his name kept going out. Every time he did a miracle on somebody, he told them, don't tell no man, just go to the priest and to the temple and give them a testimony unto the law of Moses so they won't break the law. I would like to read the book, God's Not Dead, also look very thought-provoking. Cool AC keeps saying the vitamin C done you well. I don't know what that mean, brother.
Thank you, um, Topper. He gave me the birds. Earlier, we was talking about the birds that they are allowed to eat. So it's in Deuteronomy. When the Hebrew Israelites preach about we got to keep the law and all the laws of Moses, they don't tell you what are the laws regarding clean and unclean meat. So it's in Deuteronomy 14. And... I'll go to verse 3. It says, Ye shall not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. The ox. Now, they were... Jesus, when you said... When you when y'all say they were Hebrews and they, they had to, you know, couldn't eat unclean meat. Remember when Jesus was um doing something they said his disciples went away into the city to go buy meat when they came back he told them i got meat that y'all don't know about they said did somebody give him something to eat he said my meat is to do the will of my father that's the word so they was going to buy meat even in the in the new testament brothers and sisters but they don't want to hear these things see the, the apostles went to go buy that meat yeah Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. The ox, the sheep, and the goat. You'll never hear the apostles talking about eating no sheep or no goat. But these were the things in the law. But they don't want to keep these things, see? I guess why they don't want to preach against this. The heart and the roebuck and the fowler there and the wild goat. Who you know eating wild goats, brothers and sisters? Y'all say y'all got to keep the laws and all that. You can't just say, I, I only want to keep certain laws. I want to, you cursed. You got to continue on all these things. You can't just say, I want to have concubines like Solomon because I'm a king and I'm Israelite, but you ain't want to eat no wild goat or no beetles or no grasshoppers. See? They say this is clean and unclean meat. So this is considered clean meat. But the disciples was eating fish. They wasn't eating fish, was they? Look, it say, look, they don't even teach on these things. These are the beasts which ye shall eat, the ox. What do, what do an ox look like, brothers and sisters? We got to do a whole nother teaching on this. Because we got to show pictures. We can't just teach on this and try to give scriptures. You got to show what these animals are. And show people what they look like. So we can see. It says, "These shall not, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. The ox, the sheep, and the goat. The heart and the roebuck and the fallow deer and the wild goat. So it's certain type of deers they were allowed to eat. John the Baptist ate locusts and wild honey, right? So we're not saying that this is what they had to eat in those times. But if you want to keep the law, brother, don't try to trouble Gentiles or other people that just believe in Christ. We don't put our faith in Moses more than Christ. So don't try to trouble other people if you don't want to teach about these and eat these and show us you keeping these laws. They say in the wild goat and the pie guard and the wild ox, and the chamois, and every beast that parteth the hoof, and cleaveth the cleft into two claws, and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud. Now we won't talk about that. 
or let's talk about it. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel and the hare. So they can't eat camels, but they can eat goats and um deer. So and the hare and the coney. For they chew the cut, the cud, but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. Don't sharks got fins and scales, brothers and sisters? Don't whales got fins and scales, brothers and sisters? So you get what I'm saying? Don't, um, what else? It's a whole bunch of things that got fins and scales. It say you can eat them. You don't never hear them Hebrew Israelites saying we're going to eat some whale meat or we're going to have some shark. They eat imitation crab meat. They don't even be getting the real crab meat, brothers and sisters. They get imitation. But it says, And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. It is unclean unto you. So remember when they said, Rise, Peter. Get up and eat. He said, not so, Lord. I haven't eaten anything that's com that's uncommon or not clean. He was talking about these laws right here. He knew all this stuff. They know all this stuff, but they don't want to preach this. They could eat pelicans too, brothers and sisters. They don't want to talk about all the clean birds they could eat. See, I'm giving them. This is a hard saying. Who can understand this? And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, ye may not eat. It is unclean to you. Let You want to talk about these birds? Okay, it says, Of all clean birds ye shall eat, but these are they of which ye shall not eat, the eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey and the glee and the kite and the vulture after his kind. And every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and, and, the, and the pelican. Oh, so they can't eat pelicans. And the gear eagle, or gyre eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron after her kind in the lapping in the bat and every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you they shall not be eaten but of all clean fowls you may eat see so it's clean fowls ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself thou shalt give it unto thy stranger that it is, that is in thy gates that he may eat it or thou mayest sell it unto an alien for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see, see a kid in his mother's milk. So they they say, don't eat, um, eat anything that cause your brother to stumble. Then they had the laws regarding tithing. Man, it's cold in here, brothers and sisters. It is abomination. So therefore, that falls right in there. God doesn't like the sin. Candace Foster said, what is your name, brother? I come on your page and you always ignore me. Why? My name don't really matter. But my name is 
Devon. Yeah, my name is Devon, but it don't really matter. Because I'm not here to be worshipped or glorified, but I'm here to give all the glory to God the Father. And when we say God the Father, we mean Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, who is Jesus Christ. The three persons in the Godhead y'all talking about is one. It's Jesus Christ the Spirit before the before I am the beginning and the ending, Alpha and Omega before Abraham was I am. He was the world was made by him. So that's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, and God the Holy Spirit. That spirit that he gave to all that believe and follow him. Deuteronomy separate birds to eat and not to eat, but that's not the Old Testament. They don't want to talk about them birds, brother. These are hard sayings for them. Them are hard sayings for them. We only been live for two hours and 16 minutes. I guess I got like another maybe hour in me. We'll see where it goes. This this 31 degrees ain't, too, ain't, the, ain't the most comfortable, but I could get through it. It ain't nothing I ain't been through. It ain't like I ain't never sleep in my car for a week. 19 degrees, 18 degrees weather. Justine Lucian says, In thy glory, many blessings. Some of my church sisters were having a movie night, and I was pleasantly surprised the movie was really good. KD, sir. All right, how about this, KD, sir, man? You say, Jacob, I love, but Esau, I hate. But do you know Jacob and Esau was brothers? So why would you put the division between brothers? That's a heart that divides wicked imaginations. Jacob and Esau were brothers. Why do they try to make it look like they were two different people? Like they wasn't the same family. It's like Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother because his works was evil. And his brother's works were righteous. Gilbert Patterson says what the verse means is if by keeping these two commandments, we encapsulate all of the commandments, we are to live holy and righteous. And so doing all of the laws are kept. Amen, brother. Randy said, love your enemies, turn the other cheek. God is good all the time. KD Sermons, bro, who are you? If you know the Bible so well, then you know that it's shameful for a man to have long hair. Go into number six, KD Sermons, and read number six. The Lord spoke these things to Moses. All Go to Numbers chapter 6 and start at verse 1. Read the whole chapter. But then go to number 6 verse 5. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his head grow. See, I just taught you something new, brother. Because you know... The word of God is beautiful and Jesus loves you and I love you too. And I want to help you. You probably ain't even know the Bible talks about locks, letting locks in your hair and your head grow. Also in Leviticus, 
you got two different chapters in Leviticus that talks about don't sh don't don't shave the corners of your beard or your head. It says thou shalt not mar the corners of thy beard or shave thy head. It say it two different times in Leviticus. So if it's in the law that it say don't shave your head in the law and then it's a vow that's a unto God a vow is a consecration unto God it say the the consecration of his God is upon his head you can't tell me that nature teaching itself that doesn't nature teach you is if man had long hair hairs to shame unto him hold more weight than laws and vows y'all don't can't even say where that scripture came from what 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 other scripture does it add up with y'all can't say nothing see you get put to shame when you come out there and don't come with sound doctrine see the bible tells us to be strong in the lord brothers and sisters that teaching is not strong because you ain't got nothing else to back it up we come and blow it right up out the water go right into the law on y'all the Lord spoke unto Moses these things. You can't say nothing now. You going to say Paul had a ball head. Man, Paul kept the Nazarite vow. We showed y'all how he cut his hair in the book of Acts. When he when his vow was finished. We learned so much things on these streams. And we've been moving quick. Come to Kenya. We will make you meet your black God, bro. No, that's okay, man. I don't believe in no black God. Only God is Jesus Christ, brother. Shabbat Shalom, family. Aaron, may peace be upon you. It's a lot of Chinese and Asian brothers that believe in Jesus Christ, too. dope brothers man and some of them make music and stuff like that I follow one of them on Instagram I forgot his name but it's the only true and living God is Jesus Christ man someone called you a hypocrite because of your hair wow these people are bold on here yeah Noah had long hair Y'all all love to talk about Noah, right? Talk about how Noah had long hair. See? Let's talk about... Can anybody remember how many times Jesus cast out devils out of people? See, we don't never talk about these things. that we can read of that might have to be another teaching every time Jesus cast out a devil out of people let me write it in my book right now sound like a good topic If anybody got any input on what videos I should make next, let me know. Because a lot of people need deliverance and they need devils cast out of them. So when they hear the word of God, how Jesus cast out certain devils, the one devil, he said, this kind go not out, but by fasting and prayer. So he was letting them know that you gotta fast and pray. This ain't just gonna come out overnight. It's gonna take some time. Some of us been in our sin so long, we gotta fast and pray and get and, and, and let God deal with it.
I'm looking for scriptures now. Rodney Coleman, may peace be upon you. Who is that? I came on now. Mary on the on on Yango, may peace be upon you. You said who is who? We talking about Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. The only begotten son of God. Jesus Christ, the God of grace. Candace Foster. A person can know the scriptures and still be of the devil. It's about your heart. Remember, the devil knew scriptures when he came and tempted Jesus. Noah's faith, I mean, it said Abraham's faith was accounted to him as, right, as righteousness. No. It said, Abraham believed God and his faith was accounted unto him for righteousness. If y'all want, y'all could give me that scripture. The heavens, the earth, and under the earth will bow to Lord Jesus and confess. Oh, Candace said, what are you spraying in your hair? I asked because I make hair grow oil. I'm spraying this. I, um, I heard that rosemary oil, it helps your hair grow faster. So this is a bottle of tropical roots. The hair growth stimulus. And it got rosemary oil in it. See rosemary oil right there? You probably can't see it. Now you can see it. This is all I've been using in my hair for like, since I've been growing it. Works good. Some of these sprays are not the best, they're cheap. This is good. It's cheap, but it worked good for me. God bless you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm subscribing now. Antoine, may peace be upon you. God bless you, brother. Thank you for the subscribe subscription. We all have power from God's kingdom. Jesus said that. Yup. We all have power. The more we pray to God and call on him and meditate in his word, God will start to reveal that power in you and show you the power that you have all it takes is belief small as a grain of a mustard seed it says wake up man i wasn't present until the 1500s
Christ is coming back for war. Yeah, he is. That's why he want everybody to repent. That's why every teaching is not a uh, fire and brimstone or repent and turn from your sins. Some teaching or teaching about his life and what he died for and what 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 he his purpose was, how he fulfilled these prophecies, how he done away with the law, how he taught his disciples, don't let them trouble you trying to keep all them laws. Simon, um, They was playing with them false gods. It's all Solomon wives. Wake up, man. I, Jay wasn't present until the 1500s. Oh, we read that. You need. Let me see if anybody got any scriptures. Philly butterfly full. Philly butterfly full. Have you ever had a vision from God? We all get visions from God every day, but the more silent and still you say that you just sit still and be silent, that's when he is speaking that small voice. Sometimes it's hard with all these distractions going on and everything always moving and you always talking to other people, but if you should sit still and meditate, he'll talk to you. Or sometimes you can cry and call on him and he'll answer your cries and your calls. So there's many ways that you can hear and get a vision from God. Yeah. Everybody get visions from God. Jesus has the right to decide who enters his kingdom. If you want peace in your kingdom, you need to be selective. Can't let in evil people to, to and still have peace. Do you let any everybody in your house at New G? Jesus said the kingdom of God is within. Janine English says, school them, baby. I don't believe in religion. I believe in God Almighty and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We ain't preaching religion over here to you. We preaching, follow the truth, the way, and the life. And Jesus Christ is him. And the things that he taught against the Pharisees telling y'all to keep all these different worldly, not worldly, but keep all these traditions of men and not of God. He said, y'all make the commandments of God of none effect with your traditions. Ain't no such thing as no rapture dream, brother F F Philly beautiful, Philly beautiful, or Philly butter flyful. The rapture, the word rapture is not in the Bible, brother. So when you see people talking about that, that's a word and it's like a doctrine somebody made up, but it's not biblical. Yeah, ain't nobody in the scriptures ever had no rapture or talk about no rapture. When you got no answers, just like the churches, you don't let me enter, really. 
I don't know what you're saying, new bigness. Your questions are not with scripture. So you just have questions that you just want to talk. But I'm teaching the word of God and I'm, I'm speaking about the word of God. So I only really like to answer questions that have scriptures in them. That's why I'm looking really for people that quote scripture. So I'm going to be trying to stroll down real fast in these comments now. The wisdom knows the truth. Take the Lord into the heart, mind, and soul. That's true. This is Fred, 7.8. She said, Jesus spoke against the Lord in the Old Testament. My people perish because of ignorance. I believe that Josie B, Jesus is the Lord in the Old Testament. He's the King of all kings, Lord of all lords. Evelyn Ivy said, you funny. You just said you got to have at least three concubines the other day. So you don't got more than one wife. You be contradicting yourself. I never said nothing about that. I preached against people saying that they got to have three concubines and stuff like that. I know that's funny because the way I be saying it, I be cutting them hard. But I told them, y'all talking all this stuff like that's my second wife and every man should have at least three concubines. Y'all don't love Jesus Christ. That's confessing you honor him with your mouth, but your heart is far removed from him. Ain't nobody in the New Testament had more than one wife. They always preach. Let the bishops be the husband of one wife. They never said have concubines and stuff like that. Aaron said, who do you think taught Noah to build the ark? God is a master carpenter. Suzette Royal says, you are so right. Somebody quoted a scripture, so let's look into this. In, uh, in thy glory, Josie B said, the kingdom of God is within you, is the key phrase in Luke 17, verse 21. That is what it says. Let's go to Luke 17, verse 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you.
And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see me, one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Oh, excuse me. The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say unto you, See here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Backwoods Barbarian says, No, G, no, we believe God fulfilled his prophecies. I think he means fulfilled his prophecies he gave in the Old Testament and came in the flesh to show his character and redeem us from the cross. He was man, yes, but God in flesh, the Son. Yeah. We all can do what Jesus did and more. Jesus is my brother. I do not worship him as a God. See, that's where you're wrong. That's witchcraft right there. You're saying that you can do what he did. He's just your brother, but he's not God. So you don't pray in Jesus name. The only way to the father through the son. I and my father are one. So you don't pray to Jesus Christ. You don't pray in Jesus name. You don't get no connection to the father. God, the father is the spirit. Jesus Christ is God, spirit and flesh. I keep giving y'all these same teachings, but y'all fight it with no scriptures. There's three that bear witness in heaven. God, the father, Jesus, God, the son, Jesus. Um, God the Father, Jesus, the Son, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, three that bear witness on earth, uh, the Spirit, water, and blood, you know, the Spirit, flesh, and, and um, water. Jesus came for the sinners and loved those that uphold the laws of God. Amen, Christopher. Christopher Riddens. Amen, brother. Yeah, we not politicians over here, though, brother. Everything we do is for the kingdom of God. So... We're talking about the word of God. So how would y'all try to say Jesus was a politician when he came and destroyed all of the hypocrisy? He called them lawyers hypocrites. See, he freed everybody with the truth. So you can never say my Lord and Savior was a politician. I don't even make sense. Yeah, Aaron, God loves everybody, but hate he, God, Jesus, oh, God loves everyone, but he hates the sin that is conducted by individuals. Yep, Jason Mitchell said, Jesus Christ 
is the creator of all things. He is not your brother. He is your father. Thank you. You talking about Jesus like he just some regular person that was born and walked the earth like your little nephew or something like that. You better put some respect on my Messiah name. Even the disciples didn't even completely understand what was spoken before them. Nah. A lot of things he had to speak and break it down to them. Peter walked on the water and got scared, right? Jasmine fly, stop craving flesh, it will kill you. Christ ate no flesh. I don't know what you mean by that, but I guess if you're saying don't eat no chicken, or I, I don't know what that supposed to mean. And he says, at Josie B, Jesus said the kingdom is within them only because he was with them at that time. If you look up the related verse in Matthew 12, verse 28, it's better to understand. Let's go to Matthew 12 and 28. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So he said, the kingdom of God is come unto you. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is, is come unto you. Matthew 12 and 28. And that's related to the verse that the kingdom of God is within you. So I, I believe that she was saying. Yeah, Jason Mitchell. We sinned at our sin that has darkened us. And it's only Jesus Christ who will glorify us once again. Amen. All glory be to God. Christopher Ridland says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So when you give... Give willingly and earnestly, not out of obligation. God gave life to serpent, but caused the serpent the devil. Remember, Satan was up in heaven. And he, they said he was a beautiful angel. He wanted to exalt his stars higher than the stars of God. He was prideful. Got cast out of heaven. So he got cast out of heaven and come down here and deceived the earth for thousands of years. But when Jesus defeated all of the devils and rose back the third day and all that he destroyed the works of the devil 
So he gave us the words to eternal life through his life and he sacrificed and died on a sin. He died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So if we live through him, he will clean us. He will give us his spirit. He will make us a new creature. He said, therefore, anyone in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Don't be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. That you may prove what is holy and acceptable unto God. God gave the devil free will. Will the devil choose to be the devil? Yeah, you can't pray to trees means you don't pray to God's creation. Ultimate disrespect and disregard to his creation. So where does hatred come? Ain't nobody praying to no trees, brother. That's like saying you're going to pray to an animal. Do you pray to every bird that you see fly by? That's 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 nonsense, brother. Do you pray to every ant that you see? Why would you just pray to a tree? That's like saying, let me pray to all the grass that I see. Every time I see grass, I'm gonna drop down and pray to it. Do you just pick do you just pick one particular single tree and pray to it? Or what's the point of that? It don't make no sense. He loves them as persons, but not their wrong, evil deeds. But if they keep sinning, they will be judged for their sins like everybody else, too. And that's his perfect, holy justice. Yeah. That's the truth, Sandy. Prophet Joseph Guam or Guayemba M. Amen. Glory to God. Prophet Joseph. Amen. Glory to God, brother. Good to see you here. Jason Mitchell repeats it and confirms Jesus is not our brother. He is our savior and great God. The God of grace. You can pray anywhere, but you can only pray to one. Brian Soderberg, are you homeless? No, I'm not homeless, brother. I kind of live like it. But I'm not. No, I'm not homeless, brother. That's why it's cold in here. My window was cracked a little. I'm not, I'm not homeless, brother. I do. I have living situations. Need to get my own, need to get my own place or a roommate, but I have a place to stay. I stay with my moms, but I'm not homeless. But I keep all of my, a lot of stuff in my car, like all my clothes and stuff. Things I've been through in the past, I would notice certain things. So it's just more safe for me. Live and light is God's creation. It's not a God. Philippians 3, 19. Let's go there. Now it's starting to feel like 31 degrees out here. 
in this car, at least. Because I had that window open. Wow. Hold on. Just let y'all look at this view real quick, man. Turn this around for a second. Sometimes I answer the questions faster and quicker and better when the camera is not focused on me. It's kind of a distraction. No, it's not a problem, but looking in the camera slow me down when I'm looking at myself. I'm about to answer some of these questions. Y'all turn the camera around. Let me turn around so it could be like kind of a better view. All That ain't really no view, but. I'm about to answer some of y'all questions. We've been live for three hours. I think I might call it a short stream today so I can try to get back early may be able to work a couple hours i don't know and i'm gonna come back in early so i can get these streams for tomorrow or later on today lord willing if any of y'all think you got any topics you think i should cover let me know my email is up in my about me section on my channel if you want to discuss any scriptures my email is up there I have an Instagram. We can go live on Instagram and I'll record it and should be able to save it on Instagram and throw it on this channel. But I'm here to really just edify. So I would really rather people just send me things that they think I should cover. I don't get a chance to watch worldly stuff and see what's going on in the news. So not the news, like anything, hip hop world or none of that. I haven't been on the Breakfast Club since I seen Ty Tit Ty Tibbet and just the hilarious on there. So I don't know what's going on in that world. Chief Ed. Bible say we not ignorant of Satan devices. So sometimes I will watch some of these worldly talk shows and see what they saying and what they talking about. Matthew 6 and 3 but when you give to the needy do not let your left hand know what your right hand do if say in thy glory. G 
Jesus is not a human. He is God. Amen, Jason Mitchell. Jonathan Jones says, can we all just get along? We don't need to agree or believe in the same thing to do right or get along. Don't create division where there is none. Yeah. We preach in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know if these people are Muslims or Hindus or what, but they coming in here like they don't believe in Lord Jesus, but he loves them and he want them to have a true relationship with them. So it don't matter what they say, how they feel, he'll always be there for them. Satan creates division and confusion. That is so true, Jonathan Jones. He's a deceiver. All the devil can do is deceive. That's all he came to do. Jason Mitchell says, he's not afraid of gay people. He died to save them from wickedness. He loved them so, that much. Yeah, he died for the world of sins. Everybody sins in the world he died for. Sandy said, God was just described as jealous because the Israelites worship heathen idols instead of him. Jealousy isn't wanting something that you don't deserve. It's wanting something that's yours because it's only yours. Yeah. I want to do a stream on a lot of witchcraft that was practiced in the, in the Bible every time witchcraft was practiced. That's a study that I need to take as much time as I can to get it because I don't want to rush it and just try to get as much scriptures as I could in one night. I want to really be able to meditate and search the scriptures myself because a lot of times I just look, look online and I find scriptures and don't search them. So I really want to put time into everything I'm doing. even going back showing you what these animals is and these um, laws of the birds that they can eat. Yeah, we don't believe and man, we trust in God. Thank you, Jason Mitchell. She said Dorf was a great scientist. And Simon the Sorcerer was a great wizard. You don't, it's no, it's no glory in being great at doing evil. You doesn't even deserve to be called great, but I went to the dentist and got my teeth clean, right? Like yesterday. Now all of a sudden, I eat some food stacks last night and my teeth chip. The baby tooth, the same tooth they was talking about, pull it, they wanna pull it out. They ain't even clean it right, but they talking about pulling it out, so. I don't know if I wanna go back to that dentist to tell y'all the truth, but. Yeah, man, my teeth chip. I just went to the dentist and got my teeth cleaned. And I'll eat a fruit snack and like a, a little piece of my teeth fall out. It's not in the front, it's in the back, so you can't see it, but still. That's why I really don't even like going to the dentist like that. But it's all is well, no complaints. I should have took a picture of it. Posted on Instagram. Because you talking about Wendy Williams. They was talking about Wendy Williams when I was getting my hair done. I want to speak about that real quick. They said she's real sick and a lot of things are going on with her, right? 
may may um peace be unto her, you know. I hope that Wendy Williams get all her strength back in Jesus' name. I would never want to see nobody go through nothing that God probably may. We can't say if God wanted to go through this or not, but we can say we want to see her doing the will of God. So I want to see her get her strength back so she can repent, confess her sins, and do the will of God. Jesus name and so when people go through certain things you got to look at it like this these are public figures right so there's people around there that sometimes you can't trust and they would do certain things to you witchcraft things and then these things will start to make you weaker and you would notice that certain things it's not the same with you. And I'm not saying that's the case with Wendy Williams, but I'm just saying when you a public figure, you got to be real careful of how you move, I guess. And then especially when you speaking about certain things and people look at you like you're gossiping and stuff like that. That's why everything I do, I put scriptures with it. So let people know this is not me and my opinion. This is the word of God. Jonathan Jones and thy glory said, if you correct others, it's love, but some people seek to cause division and confusion such as the Catholic church. Some of them Catholic church dudes be walking around with crucifixes on their waist. Wooden cross crucifixes. Not crucifixes, but wooden crosses on their waist. A.N. is the ghost said, why are you always live? Because I do teachings every day about Jesus Christ, brother. That's why I'm always live. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was edifying for you. And I hope, I hope the word of God helped you look at Jesus in a better light, not in a bad light as he might be betrayed or people try to take ownership of who he is tell you he was born on Christmas and stuff like that I hope this made you look at him in a better light and seen what he stood for and what he died for and how all of the prophets in the Old Testament testified that he would come and how he would be hung on the cross and how he would die how they wouldn't break any of his bones all these prophecies that we read that we just shown with all the scriptures so I'm going to be coming with more teachings soon we're going to be back Lord willing maybe in a few hours if, if Lord willing because today is going to be a short day I don't really like working out in the rain like that so I might work a couple hours and just take it down so when I go back in, I, I, I'm going to try to do some shorts, matter of fact, before I even leave and start working. So I'll see if I can get some shorts out for y'all. Maybe see if I can come back later on in the evening with, with another short live stream, maybe, and get ready for the, the live tomorrow. If I get enough time to study, I'll be able to do two topics. And that makes it more and better and interesting because depending on the teaching, I can break the scriptures down more. This wasn't really me trying to prove anything, but just showing you through the scriptures that 
they they were prophesying of him in the Old Testament how he would die on the cross. So that's what I was proving on this screen, on this live stream. So may peace be upon you all. I'm gonna leave off with that like this. And Lord willing, I'll see y'all later. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all to the new subscribers. Man, I couldn't thank God more than anything. All glory be to God, because all things working together for the good to do, for those that love God. So this all is happening according to his will. And I'm gonna continue to keep doing these teachings every day. I'm gonna try to be more on schedule and start at 7 a.m. But as long as I keep waking up, Lord giving me breath, we gonna keep giving you the teachings. So may peace be upon y'all in Jesus name.